The story of a hippie cult centered around a Los Angeles vegetarian restaurant sounds destined for infamy, but the source family has largely remained unknown. The countercultural tale of Father Yod, his restaurant on Sunset Boulevard, and his rock band turned cult remains one of the most fascinating anecdotes of the New Age. <sighs> However, <coughs> it begs the question, how does a group of hippie vegans become a free-loving cult who will follow their leader anywhere except off a cliff? I'm Jake Stromboli, and this is Laughs from the Past, bro. Welcome to Laughs from the Past, Season 7, Episode 6, I believe. Beautiful introduction from Jake here. Yep. Stoner Jake Stromboli. Mm. Hi, all the time. Gotta say hi. That song was big for a minute, huh? Nice intro. Tove love. Tove love. This is Laughs from the Past. The yes. season is cults. Talk about history here. Jake has decided to bring some history to the set. Yeah. He is wearing his great grandfather's hat as we Don't record. Think that's true. It's an old hat. Okay. It's old. Looks. Honestly, how quickly does this, if you ignore all my stylish and physique type stuff, if you just look head up, me in this hat. Yeah. I mean, how far back in time do you go? You can go to the 20s. Like, if you saw me... You wa- can go to the 1800s. We could get a picture of me walking on the streets... In the snow. In just, like, this hat. Blurry enough to make it look like you're still attractive. You could be like, oh, yeah, here's... Yeah. Chubby Italian boy lost in the 1920s. <laughs> like, <laughs> Put a bundle of newspapers under your arm. And didn't have to be... Didn't have to be lost, but it felt right. <laughs> yeah, well, of course he's lost. It felt right. In every picture alone, you look lost. Yeah. Unless you're posing. Okay. Anyway... I have uh, some problems with the intro of this episode sure. right off the bat. Yeah. What do you got? How does a group of hippie vegans become a free-loving cult? Yeah. They already are. Yeah. That was... Uh, <laughs> like, they don't become one. They are one. Who Was this producer Luke? Yes. Yeah. I think he... I think I feel like that was Luke. Maybe it wasn't. Um, because, yeah, hippie vegan. <laughs> you got a cult. That's a cult. <laughs> Instant cult. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, yeah, this might be a slightly... Different version of Last from the Past because I I heard of this mm-hmm. while driving cross country to move here. Um, one of only like two good podcasts we listened to. Me, me and the girlfriend really screwed the pooch on that one. We didn't for someone who lives in the podcast world. We did not line up the proper podcasts. You didn't have sex with your dog on the road trip, right? No, no, that's confirmed. Um, but one of the two podcasts we did like. It was a one-off about the source that you're about to hear about. And uh, the podcast, I should give them some love, I think it's titled Cults. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, yeah, I know the guy who makes that network. Yeah, so um, so I should give them a little love, and if I say anything that sounds too smart, it might come from them. But, uh, I mean, <laughs> this story was awesome. This is only the second ever last from the past, and we've done like a uh, hundred or so now, that you've requested. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's just, A, it hits all the good check marks for what we're doing in a cult. Um, and, yeah, we were doing cults, and I was like, and then you said we were we were doing the one before the last one, and I was like, dude, we don't talk about this one. We've screwed up. Okay. So, I know, so I know nothing, and you know a little. Do you want to be the reader this time? No, 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 no. You're, the, the crowd is used to you being the reader. I'm not ready to read yet. Said... Said that an odd amount of times in my life, but um, I uh, I can try to interject. But dude, I think you're gonna love this. Like, you ever do popcorn reading in high school? There's oh yeah, I, used to I know love, you tortured people. I yes, love, I mean I loved it too. Loved popcorn reading. People popcorn it to me at speed read three lines. Popcorn it right back. Right. One time I went super slow. I just teacher I hated. Sure. So they popcorned it to me, and I was like, Jim Baker was a strange man. Sure. Living in. Strange 
times. times. And then they kept like popcorn it. Get right. get this kid off the page. <laughs> and then I just kept going. You you tortured teachers. Yep. Is the camera supposed to be on? Yes. Wow. Wow. So anyway, yeah, I used to torture teachers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, I'll be reading. Yeah. You, you know a lot about this. Right off the bat, the source is a great name for a cult. Right. Am really I, good name. That's what, for a second, when I started listening to this in the car, I thought it was the family. And I, yeah. th- I thought we were going down that road, but no. Um, and I think we're in similar time periods, but yeah, the source is very much its own thing. Yeah. And uh, I think Leader's got a good backstory. We, it, it's got it all. I'm, I'm jonesed up. Also a good name, Jim Baker. Is Jim that Baker. A, there another Jim Baker in the world? Got to be. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in a famous one. Sure. Sounds like an old school ball player. Jim Baker. You're getting it. Um, okay. Nope. American Tabangelogist. Blah, blah, blah. All right, here we go. Okay. Jim Baker was a strange man living in strange times. Mm-hmm. Born on July 4th, 1922 in Cincinnati. Shout out Tom Cruise movie, Born on the 4th of July. Baker claimed to have been awarded the Silver Star while serving in the Marine Corps during World War II. The Corps does not carry James Edwards Baker's name in its official listing of Silver Star recipients. Baker also claimed to have become an expert in jujitsu. Baker's life was full of strange dichotomies. He was a decorated veteran with an interest in health, food, and mysticism long before that was in vogue. He moved to California to become a Hollywood stuntman and was influenced by the Nature Boys, a Los Angeles-based group of beats who lived a natural lifestyle, maintained vegetarian diets, and lived according to nature's laws. The Beatniks. Good stuff. All right, so it sounds like, to sum him up, he's a liar and a bit of an oddball. Yeah, he's he's definitely a bit of an oddball. There's something, uh, again, I'm digging into the cult podcast memory, but um, he got into, like, healthy food before everyone else did. Like, I think he was sick or something. And, uh, like, it was a generic thing that's commonly known today, like it was hemorrhoids or something like that. But... Um, he turned to like this healthy food and so he like swore by it, um, like too far almost. And he, uh, yeah. All right. And he was chasing the dream, wanted to be a stunt man. In the early 1960s, Baker experimented with LSD yep. and speed mm. before turning to spiritualism and <laughs> mysticism. <laughs> it's a nice path. Again, it seems like that is the path. LSD, speed, spiritualism, mysticism. They seem like two different parallel lines. Yeah. Like, it's not like, oh, I was into LSD, but now I'm into spiritualism. Sure. No, you can do both. A lot of people do, I think. He went on to study under Yogi Bajam, a Sikh spiritual leader and teacher of Kudana Kundalini Yoga. All over it. Kundalini. Kundalini. <laughs> He's over on 51st. Kundalini. How would you spell it? Kundalini. 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 Yeah, I don't know. Katie does, it looks, Katie does a good Indian accent. How would you say Kundalini? She's not feeling like her Indian accent is perfected enough that she's not going to offend someone. Kundalini. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. There you go. Yoga. It was during this period that Jim Baker officially began calling himself Father Yod. I think it's Yod. Yod? Like Yoda? Yoda. Yeah. Father Yod. Yeah, I think it's Yod. Father Yod. Okay, and things started to get weird. Mm. (coughs) So, I mean, a self-nickname is important. Yeah. Yoga, Yod, I get it. He's a yogi, but he does yoga, Yod, Father Yod. Father Yod's a good nickname. And the source is, this guy's, now this is what we learned. He's checking boxes, man. Early on in this season of cults, we realized you need to be able to come up with cool terms. Yeah. And to get people to buy into them. I think the other thing we need to know about Father Yod that the other podcast hammered away is he tends to run away from things when they get when the when the going gets real tough, he runs away. Like I think Cincinnati Oh, the guy that lied about being a silver star yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah. uh spiritualism and yeah. into yeah, okay. Yeah. That adds up. Yeah. All right. Well, 
Baker wasn't all good vibes. The future Juru had... Guru. Guru. Ju- Juru. <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> the future Guru <laughs> had a family that he ditched for a life and show business in L.A. There we go. Once in L.A., he was accused of ending the life of actress Jean Ingram's husband with a jujitsu chop to the throat. Holy smokes. Yeah. I mean, there's like this, this goes on, but there's a link to that. Yeah, you I, can click it and I'll, I'll start delaying a little bit while you read into it. But yeah, this goes into like the world was just different. And because he was a war veteran, I'm pretty sure this guy came to his house because he was sleeping with his wife. And then Father Yote slash Jim Baker killed him. But he was like, yeah, it was self-defense. And they were like, well, you're a war veteran. We'll let you go. And it's like, oh, well. <laughs> yeah. So he was sleeping with Gene. Yeah. The husband came and was and like. And I think this is, a, he is like a big, handsome guy. I think he's got some long hair. Yeah. Producer Katie's interested now. Yeah. Yeah. There's not a lot of info on this. But I, like, need to know more of that story. Yeah. Was Jean Ingram attractive? Oh, shit. You know who she is. I know who she is. Is that Jean Ingram? Because <laughs> she's, like, very famous. Has to be. Looks like it. Has to be this, this Jean Ingram. I'm not... Are there two Gene Ingram's actresses in the world? I think there's Jim Baker's. I think there's Gene Ingram's. I don't know. I'm not familiar. Is it a daughter? I th- Very interesting. Well, this one, she's from um, um, Sex and the City. No. No. What is she from? I mean... Whatever. She's from a lot of stuff. That's bothering me right now. Now it looks like her last name is Smart. <sighs> God so damn yeah, it. might Google. be on the wrong person. Yeah, yeah. Samantha from Sex and the City. And, I mean, just think of the time gap here. We're in the That's 60s. what I'm saying. That's, yeah. what, that's what I'm saying. There's two Gene Ingrams. Okay. Well, we'll circle back on that. All right, well, that's what it says. Anyway, so he jujitsu chopped a dude to the throat and killed him. Yeah. And they gave him like a... Well, you're a war veteran, and you you killed with those hands before, so that was bad. Yeah, don't don't do it again. He was like, "See, I told you, you got the silver star. That's yeah. what I did over there." And they were like, "No, well, not in the records." Yeah, check Father Yod. Father Yod. Yod. All right. Where was I? Baker, Baker claimed he took another life using the same method before becoming Father Yod and bragged that he raised the money to open Source Restaurant by holding up banks. These claims have never been proven. The sure. guy is a liar. Yeah. Despite the claims that he had 14 different wives, he had only one legal wife as James Baker, Robin Popper. Yeah. And Robin the, Popper, what a name. That is a great name. Uh, and the restaurant is very important here. Um I, I think that's the next chapter in this, but it's um the the restaurant is I, I think it's kind of a curveball in this cult that we haven't seen from other cults that it's almost I mean they can use it almost as a form of laundering of sorts and um Oh well, yeah. Well we'll get there. I mean if you can cook good food, right you can start a cult. Well and it's in LA and it's got culty vibes, so they're doing some some fun stuff. They had a daughter named Tao. Tao. Tao Yod? No. No. Tao Baker. Tao Baker. Or Popper. She could have took her mother's name. Tao Yod. Robin Popper. So the guy's a liar, right? Like we yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, there is a famous scene in Woody Allen's Annie Hall in which Alvy begrudgingly orders alf- alpha sprouts and mashed yeast while on a trip to LA. The setting is the source restaurant. Opened by Jim Baker on April 1st, 1969. The restaurant was years ahead of its time and served a stringent vegetarian health menu. At the time, the idea of a meatless restaurant blew people's minds. Still does over here. And they loved it. Yeah. 
Customers overlooked the restaurant's claim that its menu was based on the dietary wisdom found in the teachings of Jesus Christ as revealed through the essence gospels of peace. Mm. They just overlooked that. Yeah, food's all right. Like Don't you said, care about if that. there's good it food, you'll good. do anything. It tastes good. Yeah. So, like, that means it had a lot of salads and stuff. Mm. The Source restaurant quickly became popular with celebrities like Marlon Brando, Brando, John Lennon, Lennon, Julie Christie, Christie. Greta Garbo. Oh, my God. Watching her do what she did was the best. You have always been. Greta Garbo. Bit. I walked to your apartment, and it's just Greta Garbo this, Greta I do Garbo know the that. name, but I couldn't tell you anything she was in. Well, she looks like every other actress from that time period because they all did their makeup the same and had the same hairstyle and um wow she was worth 50 million in her day jake damn yeah uh okay so greta garbo was there the restaurant regularly had a line around the block filled with people waiting to get into this mystical new age restaurant see i'm so i'm so easy going with cults sure. there's a bagel place in harlem like awesome bagels, I think it's called. Katie and I tried to go there once. Line was like yeah. 40 people deep. If you're willing to wait an hour for a bagel, you're in a bagel cult. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned. A little bit. The bagel places move quick. I ran into that once and I was horrified, but I had already, I had already committed to the bagel and I was flying solo. So I'd promised Jess that I was getting her a bagel, so I couldn't bail. Yeah. So I went for it and it wasn't as bad. I mean, they're making bagels so they can move pretty quick, but still, I mean... And yeah. Not a good time. We bailed. Yeah. So Baker remained at the front and center of the source scene. Although by now he was going by the name names Father Yod and Yahowah. Got to mix it up. Yahowah. Anyone that's just listening on the podcast yeah. and you want to know how that's spelled, it's Y-A space H-O space W-H-A. Yeah, ho wa. It's kind of like you how what, but different. But different. After spending time under the tutelage of Yogi Bajan, Father Yod now had his own group of acolytes. Acolytes? Not sure, but group of people, I'm going to assume. His employees. However, employees may not be the most accurate mm. description for these impressionable there. young people. Oh, you slipping into schmoozer there. With the restaurant raking in an alleged 10 grand a day, equivalent to 40 grand a day in 2018, Father Yod began to expand his restaurant into more of a scene. Mm. He began offering yoga classes and was often seen driving a white Rolls Royce, apparently a favorite of cult leaders. Wow. He was known to pick up young, impressionable girls and bring them back to his yoga studio yeah. inside the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. so he's, uh, he's a bit of a hornball, too. I think that's important and usually a sign of a cult. I think that uh, this guy, when he said he had 14 wives, I yeah. think he was being honest. I think in his definition, any woman that talked to him was his wife. I think we get to that a little later on. Okay, cool. Yeah. One of the earliest converts was 19-year-old Robin Popper. Yeah. The go-go dancer had turned down Father Yod's advances several times. However... Oh, you're going to love this. On August 9th, 1969... She chose a yoga class at the Source restaurant over her previous plans, a night at her friend Sharon Tate's house. That evening, the Manson family took the lives of everyone in Tate's house at 10050 Cello Drive. That's fucking insane. So this guy, pretending to be like a god or a connection of God slash a culty leader, was trying to date this girl. She kept turning him down, kept turning him down. He gave her the ultimatum like, Hey, just give me one, give me one day. You don't like it. You're good. She does it on that night. The house she was supposed to go to gets slaughtered by people. So she's a believer and she kind of should be. No, nah. if that happens, that's yeah. tough to chalk that up to happen sense. You're dead without that day. Yeah. I think I fear like her Super parents, dead. you're like, no, Robin, your whole scene's wrong. Why you? Why you like being around? Father Yod's your savior. Actually, no, because Sharon Tate and her friends had nothing to do with the Manson family. Yeah. They chose that house at random because uh, the 
they chose that house because of the people that lived there prior. Right. So that was wrong of me yeah. to say she was going from bad people to bad people. Thank you. Um, yeah, she did save him. And Popper decided it must be fate, and she married Father Yod, making her the first official mother of the Source family. Badass. Yeah. Eventually, Father Yod amassed around 140 followers. That's nothing. It's a start. That's a good start. People sneeze and get that on Twitter. It's a good start. All of whom rid themselves of their house and belongings to move closer to their earthly spiritual leader. That doesn't Father. happen on Twitter. No. No. And his home above the restaurant. Yod's devotees just so happened to be young, beautiful, and stylish, despite essentially living and working together 24-7. Good for him, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, again, my my goal going into this cult season was like, hey, could I get roped into this? And I think at the start, we saw one or two that were like, maybe, sounds kind of fun. I mean, this is Hollywood, end of the 60s, start of the 70s, young, beautiful people. It's around a hip restaurant. Like, for all those people that are just like, hey, I'm going to Hollywood, man. This is exactly the what sor- you're looking The for. Source family was very hip. They weren't dirty hippies, despite their long hair. Everyone was clean and well-dressed. They were style icons in a way that the members of the Manson and the People's Temple weren't. So we did an episode on Man's Family and People's Temper, Temple. I have to say this. Yeah. What's going on so far? Really cool dude. Moves to L.A. Starts a restaurant that yeah. is awesome food. Starts a yoga class out of the restaurant. Has young, vibrant people coming in. This is happening in L.A. right now. Oh, yeah. In about 20 different places. Justin Bieber's... Justin Bieber's pastor. Crime fighting Bieber, yeah. <laughs> Justin Bieber, what's his pastor? His pastor's basically this guy. Uh, it's El Guapo? No, just, no, Justin Bieber has a pastor, and I mean... Nickname for an old relief pitcher. Um, And they like all wear Rolexes. Bieber pastor. And he's got like celebrity followers. This dude. It's kind of fun. This dude. This is, just, this is like the new yeah. cult leader in L.A. The shirtless pastor. What's his, what's his name? It's going to bother me. I can find it. Hold on. It's uh, a lot of celebrities are part of this church. Carl Lenz. Carl Lenz. Yeah. I mean, allegedly, he's not a cult leader. He's a re- good guy pastor. Right. right. All that stuff. You don't fucking. But yeah, he's kind of like, you know, without the terrible ending and the bad stuff. Right, He's, which maybe that comes, but it's not here yet. It hasn't happened yet, but keep an eye out Yeah, is what I'm saying. All right, anyway. Um, so we got all these followers. They're hip. They're not dirty hipper, hippies. Father Yo had learned very early on that the secret to success was finding as many young, beautiful women as possible and housing them under one roof. That is the secret to success. That's why they hold ladies' nights at bars, to bring people in. It's a really good call. It is why they host ladies' night at bars. Don't hold dudes' nights at bars. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> really? Gay bars. Yeah. I, not a, I think they do ladies' nights there. Yeah. Wow. Well, Amen. In 1972, Father Yod moved 143 disciples into his new home in Laos Felice Foothills, a Georgian-style mansion that was previously owned by newspaper tycoon Harry Chandler. It was built in 1914. In 2008, it went on the market for a cool $6.799 million. So I think that's an important plot twist, too. Like, this cult is doing good, and 143 is still way too many, but they've got, like, a pimp mansion. So, again, when you're on the outside, and recruiting is huge for the cults, you've got the coolest restaurant downtown, young, sexy people, and a mansion involved. I mean, it's... It looks like they took cool photo shoots, too. It's a clean sweep. You see these cool photo shoots, like, sitting on top of the rolls? Yeah. Uh, It also looks like the word mansion was very loosely used. We still haven't got a good house pick yet. It looks like a big white house. You can see the shape of it there. It's not mansion. Seven mil. Location's nice. Look at this. I mean, that is a cult. Yeah. Um, (coughs) Okay. This is where the Source family had its best years. Every possession was communal. Well, except for Father Yod's stuff. 
Everyone changed their last names to Aquarian. See, now we're getting into the deep shit. Yeah. And free love was the order of the day. Amen. People even got to pick new first names as well, which is how the family ended up with members like Electricity, mm-hmm. Isis, Sunflower, Galaxy, Harvest Moon, Ho, Yahava, and Olympus. Um, okay. So many, yeah. many have kept their source names to stay. So, Jake, what? They're just hipsters. Uh, five stars. What do you got on Electricity? Changing Ooh. your name. Five stars. Okay. Hey, electricity. But it's going to get shortened to electric or electricity. Uh, yeah, but I mean, just the, just the fact that you would go there okay. is electric enough. I'm giving it five. Uh, ISIS. That kind of... Uh, That's tough. Tough break. That's a tough break for ISIS. Yeah. Okay. Sunflower. I think it's like a three. So, sunflower? Yeah. If you're beautiful, blonde-haired woman, it's a, ten, it's a five. But if you are not, and you name yourself Sunflower. It just feels like a cop-out. Feels a little lazy. What if she always wears a sunflower in her ear? Even lazier, too. Love it. Galaxy. Oh, <laughs> four. That's a bad That's one. That's a big one. That's bad. Harvest Moon. It's a one. Damn. You screwed up. That's like Native American. Name. Skull Moon. What about Ho? Four. Yahava. Hava... Uh, Y V two. It's not good. And Olympus. I like Olympus. Okay. Olympus is strong. I'd probably go Olympus. Father Yod's Ten Commandments. Yep. Are you ready? Here we go. According to his still active followers, Father did not envision that these commandments would supersede or replace the biblical commandments. He also started the trend of saying his commandments were guidelines yeah. more well, than cool. they were rules. In 1972, he realized woe mankind (laughs) would need extra help to reach a level of consciousness that would prepare them for the imminent. Father Yod's guideline commandments were as follows. Number one, obey and live by the teachings of your earthly spiritual father. Sure. Is that him? Love your earthly spiritual father more than yourself. So do everything he says, obey him, and love him more than you love you. Yep. Easy. This is just guidelines, Jake. Yeah. Harm not one of your body parts, either by neglect, food, drink, or knife. So you can't hurt yourself. Yeah. And you have to stay healthy. Yeah. Allow each... It's fi- a decent rule that's for a, rule three. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. That's got to be a top good cult rule we see. I mean, that's like my rule for you. Take care yeah. of yourself. Take care of yourself. Uh, four. Allow each vibration to complete its own cycle without interference. What's that mean? Yeah. Every day. (laughs) If you don't. Uh, Possess nothing you do not need and share all you have. Yep. It's good hippie shit. The man and his woman are one. Let nothing separate them. Running a a good cult here. I thought you're supposed to share everything. But not the man and the woman. Okay squander not thy creative force in lust, but come together only when the three vibrations of the physical, the mental, and the emotional are in harmony with spiritual love. I didn't know. Uh, what's yeah. that? Don't just fuck to fuck? I think so. That would be the one I would I would raise the hand and be like, I just want to, cl- can we Clar- clarify this one? Because so I, I think it's like don't fuck to fuck, but I don't know. So a vibration, I think, is a feeling because, like, when the three vibrations of the physical, mental, and emotional are in harmony. Right. So vibration is a wave of feeling. Okay. Or mood or something. All right. Each morning, join your vibration with the ascending currents of the universal life energy of the universal life energy using the keys that your earthly spiritual father has taught you. So I think they did yoga every morning. I think that's what that is. Okay. Sounds good. Do every act energetically, intelligently, truthfully, and lovingly. That's smart. That's kind of killing it. Well, there's a couple here that I don't get yeah, 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 at yeah. all. Uh, uh, when number 10, when these commandments are mastered, leave the house of your earthly spiritual father and do the work of your heavenly father. Oh, wow. So they, yeah. get, they have to leave when they're done. No, I think it's when, like, if you feel you've covered me, then you can look towards God. Don't get it. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
As cool as these rules were, few family members left the house of Yod. They're not that hard, and a lot of them are so wrapped up in, uh, like, arbitrary words and kind of like, there's no hard rule amongst them. You know it's, it's not bad. Yeah. It's not bad. So, next up, the dude's got a restaurant. He's yeah. got a yoga class. He's got a house full of his own Playboy mansion, basically. Yeah. He forms a rock band. Yeah. Just like the, Charlie Manson wanted to do. This is, uh, I'd say, the weird twop. Whoa. The weird plot twist. Holy smokes. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Because Char- Charles Manson did the same thing. It seems not weird, but it's super weird. Yeah. But, but it's Hollywood, baby. Like many cult leaders, Father Yod harbored secret dreams of one day being a famous musician. He looked around to see what he had to work with. 140 disciples, celebrity-filled restaurants, and an uncanny ability to convince young people to do what he said. In 1973, Father Yod formed Yahoo 13. <laughs> Jesus. Terrible band name. He got so good at naming yeah. things until he came up to Yahoo. Yeah. That's horrible. A psychedelic rock band that played lo- 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 local high schools. A psychedelic rock band that played local high schools and other establishments. After meditating between the hours of 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., the family would then begin possessing LPs that they sold for $10 each. Yahoo Wa 13 recorded nine albums and continued to produce the work after Father Yod's ultimately passing. The last being 1977's Yod Ship, Yod Ship Suite, part three. Part three. If you didn't like part one and two. Are these on Spotify? I don't know. I don't know. I hate Spotify. Um, I will say this. I think this this becomes a trying time in the house. Because I think Father Yod found a couple of people that are good at music, and everyone else was doing like house chores, yeah. and Father Yod was like, "We're gonna jam in the garage." Yeah, that sucks for. It's awesome for the musical. It's not on Spotify. Father Yod, nineteen seventy seven's Yod Ship Sweet Part Three. All right, here's a, let's just play a little bit of a song. Just a sampling. Yeah. I fell in at the okay, you can turn the blue to of a dream. And I don't want to go there again. I want to see what's going on. Not bad. Better than we all expect. Better than be ever. Honest. Yeah. The uh, but al- not for nothing. I think they were cranking for like five years. So if you're not good at that point, yeah. His uh, album title is called "God and Hair." <laughs> it's not bad. It's a picture of him with long hair, looking like a god. That'd be a hell of a country album. God and hair. God and hair. Uh, okay. So uh, several major musical groups cite Yahoo Wa Thirteen. As an inspiration, and the albums themselves are now quite rare collector items, which is more than can be said of the music of other cult wow. leaders like Charlie Manson and Jim Jones. That's fired. Damn. Wow. In your face, hey, you Charlie guys Manson. Were pr- you guys were pretty solid at the cult part, but I guess you just couldn't figure out the band, huh? Yeah. Next step. Sucks. He's got the restaurant, Jake. Yeah. He's got the wives. Bands. He's got the yoga. Bands coming. He's got the mansion. He's got the band. Next yeah. step. Father Yod becomes a god. Mm. Big step. Huge step Big on the ladder. Step. Yeah. Final rung, some would say. Yeah. It was believed that Father Yod had magical powers and can talk to God directly, which eventually turned into the belief <laughs> that Father Yod was a god. Transition. <laughs> yeah. Well, he can talk to God, so I don't know. He's Must God. Be god. Yeah. In the Source Family documentary, we see a 16-year-old girl giving birth in Father Yod's home, surrounded by her makeshift family, including her husband, 27-year-old Sunflower oh, Aquarium. Oh, there goes your pretty blonde well, named Sunflower. Well, let's see if he was a pretty blonde. Yeah. 
I Google Sunflower Aquarium, is it just going to be an aquarium filled with sunflowers? Oh, wait. He's still alive and living to this day? Might be. There are some, there are some livers still. So this livers. is him. Not ugly. No, he kind of puts out the sunflower vibe. Ugh. Why'd they have to dress like this and shit? Cult stuff. Yeah. The Soros family recorded nearly everything they did, thanks to the group's documentarian, Isis Aquarian. In the graphic video, the baby arrives stillborn. Oh, fuck. Well, no, it takes like a an okay twist. Father Yod takes the baby and begins praying over it, and soon enough, loud cries begin to fill the room. The baby had been revived through the power. Okay, thank God. Yeah. Um, so... So again, think about what's happened here with with Father Yoda along the way and everything in the cults. A, he technically saves that girl's life by taking her on a date. And then B, this baby, I think he had the cord stuck around its neck or whatever. Yeah. So Father Yoda basically takes it off and then starts praying. And then the baby comes to life. Yeah. So, born, I mean... Born blue. When you're in this cult and you know these facts, like... Like, I feel this is the part of the cult where we get here and you start judging the people in the cult and you're like, come on, guys, he's not God. He's got a couple things he could point to and be like, whoa. Yeah, you're, you're right. Have you ever done this? Didn't think so. Back uh, to work. Yeah. Push the album. I don't like this next part. Okay. Eventually, 52 babies will be born in the Source family, thus leading to the birthing rope. Yeah. I don't like that. I don't know what that is. I don't like it. Yeah. Also, they, they finally s- let us know that yo ha wa was a version of the Hebrew word for God, which is Yahweh. Yeah. And I think another, uh, an important fact um, that I know from the other podcasts is that, and maybe this is obvious, but they didn't believe in any medicine or anything like this. So people were telling her to go give birth at a hospital and go get help and stuff like that. And she didn't do it. Um, so Katie has pictures yeah. of a birthing rope and it's just something you hold on to so you can squeeze. It's not that bad. Cool. All right, cool. All right. The next chapter of this An story, invention. <clears throat> the next chapter of this story is titled father. Yod <laughs> is a dirty old man on a lust trip. <laughs> I'm digging these. It's always sunny in Philadelphia <laughs> chapter titles. Yeah. After allegedly bringing a baby back to life, Father Yod believed he had a mission to populate the world with even more of them. He began having intimate relations with his underage disciples, much to the chagrin of his first family wife, Robin. Yeah. After calling Yod a dirty old man on a lust trip, Robin was demoted from her position as house mother. She was replaced by an even younger woman, Makushala. 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 At 20 years old, Robin was already getting too old for Father Yod. Gross. Creep. Damn, real creepy. Yeah. Not into that. Robin was devastated. She had already had a child with Father Yod, the man who supposedly saved her from the Manson family. Her fall from grace also seemed to contradict God's own commandment. The man and his woman are one. Let nothing separate them. Yeah. Damn. Instead... Father Yod ended up marrying 13 additional wives from the family, many of whom were underage. He would go on to have three children by three different women before his passing. <clears throat> so it's it's very important that we hammer the fact that he was a pedophile yeah. and, like, bad guy. Because right now the cult, in the scope of murder... Right. And suicides. Right. We're not there yet. And sure, he has some things we can point to if you're in it. Be like, buddy did these and these and these. Yeah. He's a pedophile. Bad guy. Yeah, not not a good guy. It's very rare that the cult leader is. but um, And we're starting to see things unravel when, A, you're putting most of your cult time into starting a band, and B... um when you break your own 10 commandments. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah. Although like, you know, he's allowed to break his own commandments. They've been saying Right. That. God. Uh he's God. Next chapter. The Source family escapes to Hawaii. By 1974, Father Yod had grown paranoid. 
A hospital had alerted authorities when the family brought in a child that nearly perished from an easily treatable staph infection. The heat was on, and the underage runaways, brides or not, were missed by their families, some of which were very rich and influential themselves. So that's, again, we put that in the plus column that you're, it's it's a very attractive place to join, but when you start getting into intertwined with some of the other rich and famous families, then you're going to get yourself in trouble there. Yeah, it's true. Just don't be, you know, and their kids. So like right. They have parents that care about them. Right. Yeah. Father Yod closed the source restaurant and moved the family to Hawaii. However, the locals weren't too happy, and this creepy sect of white people moving onto their turf and trying to take their jobs. Despite their supposed fortune, the trip to Hawaii nearly bankrupted the Source family, due in part to Father Yod's insistence that they buy a private plane and boat for their island lifestyle. I mean, is he moving 140 people to Hawaii? Yeah, so this was Father Yod's big mistake was closing the Source restaurant because I believe, um, again, from the previous pod, that him and his first wife, they opened a second restaurant, and I don't think it was successful. But um, I, I don't know if there was a divorce or what happened, but basically they they got rid of one, and so now they're back to the source and making money, and then he sold it uh, to take the family and move, but he he didn't realize how much the source was fueling this whole thing. The restaurant was The fueling source everything. restaurant, yes. Yeah. Well, but I mean, yeah, he moved Because how was he making enough money to support 140 people? Just the restaurant alone? Uh, pretty much, yeah, and they were doing running tasks around the house and stuff. So yeah, he moves everyone to Hawaii, and yeah, he doesn't his he buys like a dope property and stuff. But the plan is just for everyone to get jobs in town, and it doesn't work that way. This is what it looked like. It was just a garage. Yeah, that's the source restaurant. That's crazy. Yeah, it was just like a small. Yeah, there it is. Just a small. Shack type place, and there that's Annie Hall. Vegetarian food, it's vegetarian crazy. food literally started a cult. Oh, for sure. Wow, gonna use that next time I need it. Let's pocket it. So they go to Hawaii, they have a private boat, a private plane, and they're bankrupting themselves. Yeah, things quickly grew desperate, and Father Yod instructed his male disciples to trim their hair and beards and find jobs as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Father Yod became more detached from reality, indulging in grand delusions of his own godliness before mm. veering into rage and frustration over not being welcomed with open arms to this supposed paradise. The locals, for their part, believed the group would follow in the footsteps of other American cults like the Manson family and People's Temple. Father Yod also believed the government was coming after him for his underage marriages or shady tax dealings. Yeah. Really good beliefs all around. Yeah, strong like, beliefs. For the locals in Hawaii to be like, I don't know, the last couple cults we read yeah. about, you did crazy shit. Not into that. And then for Father Yo to be like, I think the government's yeah. after me for all this underage Could see them not stuff. liking that. Shady tax, yeah, yeah. And let's not forget he killed a man with his hands. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. in the throat. So a good thought process all around from everyone. Next uh, next uh, chapter is called Father Yod Goes Hang Gliding. That's great. On August 5th, 1979, so we're like uh, 10 years after the opening of the restaurant. Yeah. It was April 1st, 1960. Strong decade. Father Yod decided to, do, to de-stress with a hang gliding mission. The only issue, which several family members brought up, was that Yod had never tried hang gliding before. Yeah. God should be able to figure it out. Uh, gods should be able to figure out how to fly, right? Yeah. So before leaving that morning, Father Yod allegedly told his wife, Makushla, that her black dress was appropriate, lending credence to the idea that maybe the trip was always supposed to end tragically. Yeah. Many of the family members were up to 13... Men, many of the family members went up the 13,000-foot cliff with Father Yod and there is even video of him attempting takeoff. In the footage, the old man can be seen leaping into the air and immediately falling out of the sky like a dropped stone. Hey, how old was this guy? Um, at this point, he was born in 22, so he's what? 
like 50-ish? No. Yeah. 22 minus 80. So it's like 58, 57. Does that add up? Um, But yeah, and this is where, um, again, when I when I heard this the first time, I mean, what a way, what a way to swing. You know, hey, maybe I am a god and I will fly. Even if he does fly, where's he going to go? Yeah. And then the follow-up to that is B, you know, probably not going to fly and you're going to die. Which, um, hey, again, you know what? I was trying to find, they said there's footage of him jumping off. I think this is just basic hang gliding footage. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's I mean, tough. tough. And I, th- I think everyone was like, no, dude, don't do this. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to do this. So he landed on the beach. Yeah, this is great. And he was still alive, but unable to move. Yeah. They ran down to see him. Well, I, I just want to see the cliff. Father Yod Cliff. You know, I want to I wanna get the visual here. But whatever, crazy. You're gonna like this because we we've got a good backfire coming up. Oh, love that! Love a good love backfire. a good backfire. That was like season five of this yeah. podcast. After the accident, the source family gathered around Father Yoda and asked what they should do. Transmute my pain, he yelled. Since the majority of family members were barely old enough to drink, this led to some confusion. <laughs> it doesn't matter how old you are. If someone says transmute my pain. As he's dying. I'm confused. The group stood around alternate, alternately, alternately wailing and chanting. Transmute the pain. Transmute the pain. What does that mean? What, is it, what does it mean? I mean, it's got to be stop the pain. Oh, I thought it was like use mine. No. Transmute means to change in form, nature, or substance. So, again, and I, I think... Oh, so it's take his pain and use it like... Elsewhere in the energy world. Energy yeah. elsewhere. Um, that this man has just fallen off a 13,000-foot cliff. He semi-survived it. And he's basically saying, please try to save me. And there's a group of people around him just chanting and dancing. Transmute my pain. Five-star review. Type in transmute my pain. Um, even though his body showed no outward signs of damage. What? Yeah. Father Yod was unable to move and had to be carried home. During that time, members debated bringing their guru, guru to a hospital but were dissuaded when another member pointed out that their religion doesn't believe in hospitals. How do you have no physical damage to himself? I think it was all internal. 13,000 cliff? Yeah. Okay. I mean, he like flew a little bit and then he comes down. And all right. Yeah. Even though it was by... Uh, um, and then Father Yod passed nine days later in his home. So... Uh, again, in Father Yod, bad guy, Jim Baker, forget his name almost. Um, Father Yod, <laughs> for nine days, just laid there writhing in pain because he had told people before, we don't believe in hospitals. Yeah. So I think I mean, that would be... He didn't believe in... I mean, they were supposed to never break up a marriage. He broke that up. Like, Well, he's God. He could have easily said, oh, I, I, I'm going to break this. I just think if you're running a nowadays cult like Justin Bieber's guy that we talked about, Lentz. Allegedly. I think, like, hey, if you add modern medicine and that's fine, like, that's going to extend your cult five, ten years. That's true. Have you seen pictures of him? Like, he really tried to make himself look like God. Yeah, I mean, he went. I, when you're that far in a cult, you got to go full beard, all white, et cetera. Wonder what happened to the restaurant. Dude, again, there's probably some cooks there that were crushing it. Think about there. There's when you're recruiting for a cult and you're like, yeah, our guy's connected to God. 
and he comes out of the back and he's like clean shaven and like oh, you know, yeah. you gotta, kind of in you shape. Gotta, not you got to look like that. Father Yod pops out, big white beard, long white hair. Yeah, give me that guy. The family tried to remain together through two very difficult years, but without the guidance of Father Yod and the income from the source restaurant, they were unable to hold on. The family dispersed and began taking work in fields throughout Hawaii. The source family was bizarre and unique. Their hardcore philosophies, or perhaps prophecies, on vegetarianism and yoga made them trendsetters at the time. Since the only cult member who was physically harmed was Yod himself, the Source family can be remembered somewhat fondly from a healthy distance. Uh, okay, let's, yeah. let's hear this one out. Because I, I, I hear what they're saying. They didn't murder anyone. They didn't do group suicide. Right. From, they didn't try to do terrorist acts. Right. All the other cults that we've talked about have done that. Right. Murdered themselves, murdered other people, uh, caused terror. These people didn't really fuck with... Regular civilians. No. They kind of made their own own thing. He did go seek out these young girls and right. then uh, have statutory sex with them. But that's Father Yod, right? That's Father Yod. You know, that, that wasn't throughout the cult. That was Father Yod being a bad guy and a creep. So if we say Father Yod brainwashed these young people, yes, yeah. they stood by and watched as he was a bad guy. But they were a bit brainwashed. Yeah. They never really did anything to harm anyone else. No, and that's, I, I think as you started Googling, like some of these people are still around, like those fake names. Like I think, I think Isis, who was the bookmaker? Sunshine was still around. And like the people, I, I mean, they still like continued to live and had flashlight on your phones on. Um, like they they continued to go on and kind of live okay lives. Yeah. Which is pretty bizarre. They all looked happy. Like, that's kind of a huge win. Uh, I have... This is going on in Hollywood as we speak. Yeah. Like, whatever this was, it's it's a lesser form of cult. Like, it is a Hollywood trendsetter for young people. And there's probably hard... Harder core forms of cults going on that we're not going to hear about until 10, 15 years. Yeah, this was just a dude who did cool stuff and young kids wanted to be around him. I mean, honestly, if you take out the pedo well, I, stuff. Yeah, all the pedophile stuff's bad. Right. Just want to make sure we're, I, ha- I we're, hammer that. We're a huge anti-pedophile pod. Always have been. Always we will, always swear will be. by that. Yeah. Um, If you take that out, almost everything else is fine. Yeah. They made good music. They made good food. The music was better than I expected. That was weird, right? That was good. It was like music from the 70s. Yeah, big time. You want to play it again? For sure. I don't know what it was. Because they're not on Spotify, probably because they're called. Here you go. Right. Here you can hear me. I mean, in that verse right there, he talks about pitching up hitchhikers, climbing mountains, and finding Lord. That's kind of the whole story. That's that's kind of it. I wonder. Uh, I wonder if my pops is familiar with Yahoo Thirteen. Maybe. Like, if I had to place a bet, I'd bet yes. Shoot him the text. Likes music. That was his time period. A little cult action. Had a beard. Had a beard. That's Had great. a fro. Can you text him? I'll text him. Okay. All right. This ends this episode of Laughs from the Past. I believe this is our last episode of this season, which details cults. We thank you for listening. If you enjoyed any of this, leave a review. We appreciate that. And uh, see you later. Bye, guys. Hey guys.